One stop for Daryl and Curtis was the Roslyn Institute, famous for a sheep that changed the world of livestock forever. Now Daryl is sitting down with the Institute's president, who was also a researcher on that groundbreaking project. All right, we're visiting today with uh, Bruce Whitelaw, director of the Roslyn Institute. So uh, uh, thank you for being here. To, uh, tell us a little bit about the Roslyn Institute. So obviously Roslyn has uh, uh, a reputation around a certain sheep called Dolly, <laughs> um, which, which has been wonderful for us for, for decades now. Right. Um, at the time, which was back in the 1980s, uh, we were very much focused on genetic engineering of animals, mm -hmm. livestock in particular, and we still are. And at that time, it was a very crude technology we had. Uh, we would do what's called pro-nuclear injection, where you would take a very fine glass needle and inject your transgene into a fertilized, the pro-nucleus of a fertilized egg, a zygote. Um, sometimes that worked, sometimes it didn't work. Right. In the mouse community, in the research community that I work with mice, um, many laboratories around the world were using what were called embryonic stem cells. Um, these are pluripotent, they con contribute to all parts of the animal, but most importantly, you can manipulate them in culture. You can do your transgenesis, or nowadays your genome editing, in, in culture. We didn't have that um, in, in large animals. This then led Ian Wilmot, Keith Campbell, to develop the, the Dolly project which utilized, rather than transfer of a stem cell, mm -hmm. transfer of a nucleus into an enucleated egg to form, uh, reconstitute that embryo and form an animal. Um, at the time, completely, up from a scientific perspective, complete breakthrough. This would open up um, very sophisticated uh, uh, genetic engineering possibilities in, in farmed animals. Right. But it also opened up this huge debate around cloning. Exactly. Um, uh, initially focused on cloning of human beings and, and a variety of, of uh, uh, aspects as well as animals. Um, the, and, and, you know, across the world, colossal public, colossal regulatory, colossal ethical debates around right. this, which still go on today. Right. Um, uh, and, and have as much resonance today as they did back in the, the <laughs> late 80s and early 90s. Um, the irony of it is we, at the minute, don't do any more cloning here. So the Dolly Project has led to a lot of things. Talk a little bit about some of the, the ripple effects that have come from the Dolly Project. The ripple effects of Dolly, um, there are three major ripples coming out, and they're, 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 they're not... Um, these, these are tidal waves, these are not just splashes. One, one is the, the development of genetic technologies in livestock and farmed animals. This is what's central to our activity here at, at Roslyn. One is the uh, uh, speed of which cell-based human therapies are developing around the world, TCAR cells being the current uh, forefront of that. And that's, that's exploded, this idea that you can use cells as part of your surgical solution to, to a patient's uh, 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 disease um, is, is huge and is gaining momentum. The other one is, and partly the reason why you're here, is the public debate and the interest that society has in biology in general, not just Dolly, but in, in biology in general, and, and that's massive. I mean, before Dolly, very few people would talk about genetics, would talk about um, uh, biological research. After Dolly, everyone's talking about exactly. it. It's a continuum, you know, and we, we, we developed the, the pro-nuclear injections, first of all, as did other labs. We developed cloning. We then moved into viral vectors to help us create transgenic animals that has limitations. We now use these wonderful molecular tools called genome editors, such as CRISPR or mm -hmm. Talon or Zinc Fingers, primarily CRISPR technology, because it's very easy to work with. Um, we're using that to create very specific mutations in large animals that confer some sort of uh, uh, improved trait right. upon them. The example I would give is a disease called PERS, porcine reproductive oh, yeah. respiratory syndrome, which we have taken out one exon, which involves using two guide RNAs in CRISPR to chop out that exon. Um, the animal is viable, it reproduces, it grows, it feed converts, everything is as would be before, 
but that one exon is where this virus interacts right? and those animals are resistant to viral infection. Where did the name Dolly come from? Well, Dolly came from one of our farm staff who suggested that it, um, that, um, uh, it could be named after Dolly Parton. There we go. And, and we once, again, anecdotally, we once had a conversation with uh, Dolly Parton's PR team and asked the question, did, did they mind this sheep called after her? And the answer was, any publicity is good publicity. There you go. <laughs> So, you know, thank you so much. We've had a great visit, Bruce. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to visit with you here at the Roslyn Institute. And it's great having you here, especially on such a lovely sunny day. Absolutely. You're welcome back. Thank you. <laughs>